Look, it's goldenrod. I'm seeing it bloom everywhere now. Of course, there's several different varieties of goldenrod. Some bloom earlier than others, and some produce more nectar and pollen than others. My experience is, it's the later of the goldenrods that you get the best flow from for your honeybees or your pollinators. Seeing the goldenrod, I've had a few people ask, could you share some information on them insulated inner covers that you use? I'd really like to make my own. And uh, I'm gonna share that information today. I've actually got one of the inner covers right here, and I'm gonna give you some measurements and some details on how to make these. They're very, very handy and a great, great piece of equipment to have for winter time if you're in a cold region. Being here in central Ohio, all of my hives get something similar to this. Maybe a little bit different size, but they're all similar to this setup. So we're gonna break that down. Um, I wanna share a little bit of information on the sumac treatment that I did on stand this week. And I wanna update you on the swarm in the tree. <laughs> so let's get started, folks. Let's break down this uh, inner cover. Okay, we're gonna start with some overall dimensions to the outside. Across the inner cover, we've got 16 and a half inches to the outside. That's from outside to outside. We turn it long ways and we are 20 and a quarter long. 20 and a quarter long. Um, as far as the, the width of the boards I used to wrap it, they are one and seven eighths. And I would say you could probably pretty easily get away with a two inch board. But if you wanna go down to one and seven eighths, that's what mine are. And I also wanna go ahead and point out, you can see here on the corners what I've done is I take a piece of aluminum and I'll cut it less than an inch and seven eighths. Looks like maybe an inch and a half. And I stapled it here with my uh, Brad stapler. And then I bent it around with my hammer and I stapled it here. And that'll make your corners a lot stronger. Now I've got another inner cover here that's coming apart. And that's where I'm gonna show you how weak the corners can get over a period of time. And it just blows apart. So that's fine. We're gonna use this today to uh, completely gut the inside so you can see what they look like. So we open it up here. You can see we've got MDF which is a real cheap board. Uh, you don't really want moisture to get to that, but that's what they used. I didn't make these. I bought a whole bunch of them from another beekeeper who was getting out of beekeeping. So anyway, he used MDF. Um, my recommendation would be that you use Luon or maybe even, uh, what is it, Chiroplast? Is that how you say it? Uh, that that board that you see uh, people use uh, for real estate signs and different things, that may even work. Um, just a suggestion there. In the center, we have a piece of the blue insulation styrofoam that is three quarters of an inch thick. And it's sandwiched between them pieces of MDF. So if we pop off the end here, it goes down here, this is what it would look like. We've got rabbits dadoed out for the MDF to go into like so makes a nice seal as you can see there and to give you some measurements here coming from one side to the other it looks like the rabbit is at 3 8 of an inch to 9 16 of an inch the next one starts at one and a quarter inch and goes to one and a half inches. But these grooves may change depending on the thickness of the material used. Um, if you use Luon, this will work perfect. If you use this thin MDF, it'll work just as perfect. Now to give you a thickness on this MDF, we are at right about an eighth of an inch thick. So, you would want to cut your piece of styrofoam, obviously smaller. Let's go ahead and break this open more. 
What the heck? You need to help people out and let them know how to make these things. Let's just destroy this one. <laughs> okay. Here's your piece of foam insulation. Just get the stuff off of it there. That's what it looks like. And the reason it has a square hole in the center is for this, this little block of wood. This block of wood is four by four. And the hole in the center um, is two inches. So they took a four by four block of wood, put a two inch hole in the center, and then they took this uh, corrugated metal and stapled over it to act as, I guess, an excluder. Um, and that seems to work wonderfully for me. But this goes in the center, like so. Now let me get the let me get the measurements for the foam. The foam is 14 and three quarters, 18 and a half. So obviously, after you start to assemble this, you get your MDF cut to size. This is 19 and a quarter. 19 and a quarter by 15 and a half. So I know I'm throwing a lot of measurements out here. Um, if this is something you're interested in, rewatch the video, pause it, jot down the notes, maybe draw you a diagram and write the measurements where they need to be. So, foam would go in here. This would go on. Then you would slide in your next piece of MDF into this groove on the back side, which I don't know how well it's going to work for me, but we'll pretend. This old thing needs some, uh, some tender love and care. There we go, it went in there. So after this is on, then we staple here in the center to our block of wood on both sides. And then we continue to wrap with our pieces of uh, wood. So that's a quick rundown on uh, the inner covers. I hope I gave enough information there um, to build one. One thing I do want to include that's very important is this notch. Now let me show you on the good cover. So this is my good insulated cover, one of them. And you can see down here on this end, there is a notch right here. This is very, very crucial come winter. Uh, if you're in an area that gets much snow and the snow gets deep, maybe for a period of time, maybe two, three weeks, then this, this uh, entrance here is gonna be crucial for you. What happens is, is over winter, as the snow starts to accumulate, the bottom entrance gets blocked off. Any bees that need to take a cleansing flight aren't able to escape. So they're gonna rely on this upper entrance to get out, to go potty, get back in. Um, another very important thing about this top entrance is it's a place for moisture to escape. Now, imagine this. In your beehive, you've got your cluster of bees down in the bottom box, okay? Now, the temperatures start to cool down. They're going to start clustering. They're going to get tight together to keep warm, and they're going to take turns circling in and out from the center of the cluster to the outside. And that's how all the bees keep warm and it's how they keep the queen warm. She'll stay in the center of that cluster and they just keep rotating who goes to the center and who goes to the outside. When you're on the outside, that's your time to take a potty break. You're gonna need this entrance. But that heat from the cluster is gonna rise up in the colony and anything that that moisture hits, it's gonna to stick to and then drip back to the bees. So by having this insulated cover, the moisture is gonna hit the bottom of this cover You've got an upper entrance, which here's the extra kicker about it. Moisture is going to go right out, out into the air or into the uh, outside environment, and it's not going to cause a moisture problem inside your colony. If you do not have this, your bees are going to get wet. Now, this one's a little bit more narrow than I really like. I really like them to be about this size. So let me give you an idea here. The width of this one is two inches. The width on this one, 
is three quarters of an inch. So I guess if I had a preference, I'd pick the two inch. But if you are not sure that you want to give an upper entrance and you want to stick smaller, at least give a three quarter. It's going to make a world of difference for you folks. You're going to come out on a very, very cold, snowy day, check your bees. Maybe you want to sweep off the bottom entrance and that's fine. But uh, what you're going to notice is a bunch of ice or moisture crystals up around this. And the reason that is, is because of that warm air coming out. And when it hits the cold outside air, it condenses right here. And that's a perfect place for it to happen versus inside the colony. So if you have any questions about this, leave them down below and I'll try to do my best to help you out. Now let's go check out Stan and I'll give you a rundown on what's going on there. Boy, it's been so hot and muggy this week. You can almost cut the air right now. You can probably just see the sweat just pouring off my face. Uh, pollinator garden here in the bee yard. It's, it's heading on its way out, folks. Season's almost come to an end, sadly. Um, that's the discouraging thing about seeing goldenrod. As a beekeeper, you're gonna realize that once you start seeing goldenrod, you know winter's coming. And I like winter. I'm just, I'm not sure that I'm ready to hop straight to it. I wanna enjoy fall. One of my favorite seasons but uh cone flowers here i don't really see anything working them anymore be collecting some seeds from them to disperse in other places the bumblebees have been all over this wing stem haven't seen a whole lot of traffic from the honeybees but bumblebees sure loving it look there's one right there another one they're just all over it and i can't believe it. Look, there's another one and another one over there. And another one right there. I told you they're all over it. I wasn't lying. I've never seen it get quite as tall as it is. I bet when it before it started to fall over there, it was pushing nine, ten feet tall. Now here's something I think's weird. And maybe somebody will have the reason for it. I've got white sweet clover right here in abundance. You can see it. I mean it's huge. It's taller than me. This plant's probably seven foot tall. Okay, all of this right here laying down is all white sweet clover. Not one time did it bloom this year. Yeah, not one time. I've been waiting, thinking any day now it's going to bloom late, be a great source for the bees to work, but nothing. There's no blooms, buds, anywhere on it. So, you know why? Because I don't. Kind of weird. Is it something to do with the soil? I don't know. All right, let's go talk about Stanley. <laughs> Mr. Stanley. It's been so hot this week, all the bees been bearding like crazy. Sue the other day looked insane. Here's a picture. And the picture, um, you compare Sue to what Stan looked like, it kind of shows you the population difference. So, four days ago, I came over here, Broke down Stan, took the boxes apart, pulled some frames, and I'm going to share that with you here in a second. And I did a sumac treatment, you know, used it for my smoker source. Afterwards, I cleaned the sticky board, applied a new layer of Vaseline, and just sit back and waited. They're doing pretty well, really. I mean, they got a nice brood pattern. We've got food stored up here in the corner. Same with on this side. Decent amount of food. The rest of it's all brood. It's actually a heck of a brood pattern, if you look at that. It starts here and goes clear to the other side of the frame.
This will give you an idea of her brood pattern. Stanley, 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 you're looking pretty good, buddy. Guess it ain't Stan Lee, it's Stan for standard. But anyway, one heck of a brood pattern. Um, seeing that brood pattern, I better stick some frames in that top box because once that brood starts to emerge, they're going to be out of the room. Okay, let's check out the last frame. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. That queen's been a busy girl. Very busy girl. Okay. So while the frames are kind of spaced apart, we'll go ahead and apply some extra smoke. And we'll see what happens. We'll give them two days, 48 hours, and we will return. Hear how loud they got? Let's smoke this frame. There, that's pretty good. there we go as I mentioned I'll give them 48 hours and I'll start checking that sticky board and see if we notice any increase in varroa mites hopefully that is the situation if you remember right um, the last time I looked in on Stan's sticky board there was a handful of mites There we go, got a nice new pretty coat of Vaseline on her. Um, after 24 hours, I pulled the sticky board and gave it a quick look over. During that inspection, sadly, I only found one mite. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. There's one mite right there. One mite. That's not very good. I was hoping to see like 12 mites. Looks like just the one mite after 12 hours. So we'll put it back in and check it again in 24 more hours. And that will be the 48 hour window. So we're gonna pull the sticky board again now and check it after this is be 48 hours. Um, we're into it pretty good at this point. So if, if Sumac has any hope at all of working, I would think I would see an increase in mites from the other day. Let's pull it and check. Boy, you see all that pollen going in there? Yellow and white, and there's some yellow. Beep, 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 beep. That's something kind of interesting too, I'll point out real quick. Look at the entrance on Stan. See all them bees? 
But look at the entrance reducer, I guess. See how it looks nice and pretty still? You come over here and look at Sue. They've actually removed chunks of wood by chewing on it. You see that? They don't even have paint on it anymore. That kind of shows me that there might be uh, some hygienic behavior there, the, just the chewing. But there need to be more testing to prove that. Anyway, let's go pull the sticky board on stand and see what it looks like. Okay, looking across here. That takes a minute. Look, we got a we got a bee leg. There's another bee leg. I tell you, folks, I'm just a little bit discouraged by what I'm seeing here so far. You got to look this hard to find mites on your sticky board. Look, there's there's one right here in front of my finger. See any more? Do I see any more? Keep looking, Jason. Okay, there's one. That makes two. And there's three. So, three mites. That's not real, real encouraging. So, I'm going to tell you what I propose, folks. Here's what I propose. I think I should do another round of this sumac treatment. Um, give it two, three days, maybe four. See what the mite count looks like. And then from there, um, do an oxalic acid treatment, vaporize them, and uh, then check the sticky board again. So what that's gonna show us is how many mites are truly in there that could be dropped. And what sumac either failed to do or there just wasn't any mites there to do it to. So that's what I'm going to do this week. Um, and we'll have that in the video next week for you to check out. Got that back in there. Um, you can share your thoughts on my proposal down in the comments section. So as far as the swarm, yeah, they're still up there. You see them? They ain't coming down. A couple days ago, I found some lure that I made and I added it to this box. Moved it over to where the sun could shine on it, hoping that it would stir up the aroma, the bees would smell it and magically move in and make everything perfect. But that didn't happen. Well, look what I just found. You know what that is? I bet some of you do and some of you are curious. This is a homemade swarm lure, or queen lure. Um, what it is, is it's rubbing alcohol. Some people use grain alcohol. I used rubbing alcohol and it's a bunch of dead queens that I've either pinched or for some reason did not need and I stuck them in this jar with the alcohol. What that does is it absorbs the queen's pheromones and becomes an attractant. I used to use this all the time when I'd set up a bunch of swarm traps. I haven't used it for some time but you can see it's got to have a lot of flavor in it with all of them queens. Flavor, smell, you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is, I got this paper towel, and it's it's no ordinary paper towel. I'm not real sure of the brand, but it's stretchy. It's about like a shop towel, one of them blue shop towels. I'm going to put a little bit of this alcohol on that paper towel, and I'm going to set it in this colony that I've moved um, for the bees that moved up here to the tree. It was sitting there on the fountain, but I moved it over a few feet, turned the bottom so air can get up through it, and uh, I don't know, I'm just hoping, folks. So what we'll do, we'll take the lid off of this. And I don't really want any of the queens to come out. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. And I'm gonna take that paper towel and I'm gonna set it on top of the frames. Here's what I've got set up for the 
to try and attract them down out of the tree. Ten frames. Um, a few of them have Swarm Commander uh, sprayed on them. There's the paper towel. I've got that big rock in the back to prop open the inner cover, hoping that it'll help carry the scent. And look at all this burr come here on top of the inner cover. You would think that would have some smell to it. So, we will set it back up here and close it back up. Another day of rain, so I can't leave it open. So, they're still up there. See them? I haven't messed. I don't plan to mess. If they want to come down, then I'll mess. Otherwise, stay up there. Fly away. Do what you want to do. I'm not messing with you above the power line. And I've had a lot of great uh, suggestions on how to get them out of the tree. But hey, hey folks, power wire, that's all right. That's a $100 bill up there. I can raise them bees a lot easier than it, it is to mess with that power wire. I don't want to I don't want to get hurt. It's not worth it. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, leave them down below. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please take a minute to do so and make sure you click on that little bell. If you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'd be appreciated. Um, like I said, and if you have any questions about that inner cover, maybe a measurement I missed, please leave that down in the comments and I'll do my best to provide that information. Um, had somebody reach out through an email a couple weeks ago about that inner cover. And I've just been so swamped, I have it slipped my mind until two days ago. So I thought, you know, I'm going to mention that in this week's video. And then yesterday, um, I got a message on Facebook through my B page asking if I could share some insight on deep snow in the winter. First year beekeeper. So I hope that little bit of information I shared was helpful. Um, and I'll do it my best to answer any further questions you have, like I stated. So, like I said, thanks for watching, and uh, keep cool, folks. It's extremely muggy right now. Um, keep hydrated. Keep your head up. Cooler weather is coming. Um, I know we're all not looking forward to that, but I kind of am. I really am. Shouldn't be out here wiping sweat out of my eyes every every three seconds. Feels like so. Keep cool, folks. We'll see you next week. And thanks again for watching. Tell them bye, Wee Bug. Tell them bye. Tell them bye, Wee Bug. Who is that? Wee Bug. Who is it? Wookie. Wookie. Wookie, Wee Bug. Don't be drooling on camera, girl. Don't be drooling on camera. Come on, you gotta be pretty, girl. You can be a movie star, Wee Bug. A bug shedding. Yeah, her body says, I'm hot. I gotta get rid of this hair. Bye, folks. <laughs>